Okay, the recording is in progress, and uh, let me see here. Um, are we? Uh, oh yeah, we're on Facebook. We're we're doing just fine. Boy, there are a lot of people waiting right now to get on. I mean, it, it, usually it's not this many, but it's a lot. So let's get them in here. All right, admit all. Here we go. Oh wow. That's a lot of people, folks. That's a lot of people. <laughs> wow. Oh, well, there they are. Oh, who we got here? Well, we've got a uh, person who claims to be my wife. I'm here. <laughs> yeah. And then there's uh, there's uh, Scott Boddicker. We haven't seen you in a long time. Scott, how are you? Doing good. Okay. And... Uh, of course, we have Charlie Wallace with one of his famous T-shirts. We have Charlene Solis, and we have Jeff, and we have, yeah. oh, Paul Eleven is joining us now. Uh, we got, uh, oh, hey, w wait a minute. Is that Edward Berger? That's right. <laughs> <laughs> and Len LaFrisco, and... None and Andrew Deutsch. Hello, Andrew. Hello, John Ewing. Love having you here. Francine Witt from right down the street somewhere. I'm actually I'm in Boston, actually. You're actually oh. in Boston today. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And of course, there's Mandy O'Brien. <laughs> and of course, the lovely and attractive right. Paul Eleven as well. well. Uh, <laughs> and, uh, later on, we'll probably get joined by Paula Twelve. No, you might. Uh, you hate me for that, don't you, Paula? No. Huh? <laughs> no, it's like more than that. <laughs> or, or am I the only one who's ever done that? Well, actually, in Philadelphia, we pronounce it Levin, so it's it's only been an issue with New York people. Okay, and, and uh, Shapiro, right? Yeah, <laughs> yes, Shapiro, yes. Yeah, you, you Thank know, you, Paula. Who you think Shapiro, <laughs> but he says Shapiro. Shapiro! Shapiro. Her, That's her, her enemy. Shapiro. 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 Her, her enemy, by the way, Alex, is unleavened like the bread. Oh, that's, that's terrible. <laughs> oh, wow. I can't believe what he just said. I'm, I'm going to be opening for the RNC next year. Yeah? <laughs> yeah. I'm just trying to figure out who I'm going to call an island of garbage. We got a lot really? of fun here today. I wonder why. Uh, you know, Marjorie and I got our new phones. Oh, nice. so we decided. Oh, nice. It, it, three years is about right, isn't it, for not yeah. getting a new phone? Right? Yeah. yeah. We, is that your, whose phone is it? That was mine. <laughs> oh, that so was yours. Oh, okay. Uh, so we went out and we, uh, we decided to get one of these. We went to our local dealer. And I never get out of there for under like six hundred dollars. This time it was a thousand dollars. Yeah, for just little doodads that he hands us, like the covers here for the for the phones and the thing that goes by our bedside to hold <laughs> the phone. So when it turns sideways, it makes beautiful colors and tells well, you charges. It charges. To char well, charges too. <laughs> uh, and I wish he didn't charge us. Um, <laughs> So we go through all of this, right? You know, and you think, all right, you, you going down to get a new phone. And that, it's not that easy, right? Because then the watches didn't work. So the watches had right. to be, oh, God. And have you ever called AT&T? Anybody here have AT&T? Not anymore. Nope. nope. One, not one of my phones anymore. is AT&T. Uh, I I tried to call them. I called them on Sunday because I had a problem, right? Now, uh, it, it, correct me if I'm wrong. When you call companies on a Sunday, are they there? Customer service? No, never. Never on Sunday? Well, they, never, never on Sunday. They I, are in India. <laughs> yeah. I don't know a service that doesn't, isn't open on Sunday because... Let's say your your iPhone breaks or your watch breaks or something like that, or it gets out of sync or something, and you need to call <laughs> customer support on Sunday. 
there's nobody you can call because they're all home. I don't know. Huh? Well, if your phone's home. broken, how are you going to call them anyhow? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay, my watch might be broken. Okay, are you happy now, Andrew? Never. <laughs> Never. <laughs> <laughs> So anyway, I've been dealing with them on and off, trying to call them, and then you call them, and then you find the phone number, and then you have to tell them what you want, and they ask you, what do you want, what's your address, and oh, hey, we're going to send you a security code. Oh, yeah. good. Send me your goddamn security code. It means nothing. I don't want any of that. Just give me my phone. Let it work. Let me put my watch on. Let it still work, you know. Mm -hmm. But finally today, I got everything going. I got Marge's, Marjorie's uh, watch going again on cellular. I gave her a different phone. I gave her a newer phone. Uh, His old phone. I get the old handles. Well. Which is fine. I'm not complaining. You're not complaining. I mean, I offered to buy you one of these. But look at her wrist. Hold up the hold up the watch. Do you have the watch on? No. no. Her wrists are so tiny that the normal uh, <laughs> wristband will not fit her. And it falls off. She has to go. I don't know to the kids section or something and get <laughs> get a strap for her phone. Uh, and so this thing is, you know, it's big. It's uh, you know, uh, here, here, there we go. You yeah. know. It's a big one. Right. Yeah. Do you use both at the same time? Your the, the your 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 phone and 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 the watch. I don't get it. Well, why why do you need the watch? Phone uh, because we have cellular on the watch. You, you can talk in the watch. You, you can't use your your wrist your Apple Watch unless you got your phone with you. Unless you got one with cellular service, in which case you can leave this home, go out. Somebody calls you, it rings on here. You can talk to them on the on the wrist phone and all of that. So it it uh, you know switches off. When I'm at home, uh, all the things that I get on the uh, iPhone, like uh, messages from you know people who go to me on Facebook and so on, show up on my phone, on my wrist rather. So it it I like you kids and your your huh. <laughs> The kids have the said, Apple you, kid, nose you kids and your little devices. <laughs> <laughs> well, how many here have an actual like Apple Watch? Would you raise your hands, please? See? Okay. So I mean, a lot of people yeah, have the really. Apple Watch. And it's a very I I think you 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 find it uh interesting, right, Marjorie? You don't mm -hmm. you couldn't live without it. So I like it. Kind of things you it. went, eh, who needs the who needs the Apple Watch? And then you go buy one and now you can't live without it. Yeah. You know? So <laughs> my, my parole officer gave me an Apple uh, ankle ankle uh bracelet. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> it's good. It's for, they're really good. They work fine. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, so you know, uh so, so that was what we did. And so I spent my whole weekend trying to get her watch going and so on. It was it, it was a mess. But here we are now and everything is fine. And uh, my uh, person who sold us the phones is much richer now yeah. because he sold me, sold me like a hub that I can take with me, a little one to Europe, and it had an adapter for Europe. It's all cute and everything. And then the, here, $1,000. Okay, well, <laughs> what the hell? You know, I have fuck you money, so, you know, live with it. How you doing, Boddicker? We haven't seen you in a while. It's been about a month. Maybe. Yeah, yeah. I'm doing good. Where Beautiful are you? Day. You in Plano? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Beautiful oh, okay. weather. Went for a nice walk. Finally Can't cooled off here in Texas, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Two people t in from Texas on this show today. Isn't What's that? happening with the Ted Cruz campaign? I hope he gets beat. Me too. Oh, he's <laughs> He's struggling a little bit, I think, but he's going to win. I, yeah. I have no doubt he's going to win. Why? Why, why do you not have a doubt that he might? Because the state is messed up. Yeah, I edited that. <laughs> and he's known. He's known. Yeah. yeah. But everybody hates him. 
Yeah. <laughs> That's the question here. Every he puts it right. Everybody does hate him down there. I mean, you the one thing I guess they're never gonna forget is the fact that during what a rainstorm or something like that. Oh, the ice, storm. ice storm. Yeah, he got up and went to Cancun. Cancun. Well, you know, you know that's the time you stay home, even to me, even for optics. Five million people had no electricity and it was in the single digit temperatures. And he goes to Cancun. Yeah. By the way, if you haven't watched the Madison Square Garden oh, God. Donald Trump <laughs> rally, you are missing out on about five hours of amazing entertainment. <laughs> you mean you mean when when you can get away with commenting about a black member of the audience who's carving watermelons instead of pumpkins? That's, that's right. great entertainment. Uh, that's right. Now they had this up <laughs> comic, and I don't know where he's from, but I think it was somewhere around 1960. Uh, <laughs> I heard they played Dixie when he came out. Really? Oh my God! The man, the man well, implied here, here that was the big line that got everybody. He said, uh, "There's a lot of garbage out in the ocean uh, <laughs> called Puerto Rico, the island of garbage in the ocean." An island of garbage. Who was handing out the? Was there somebody handing out sheets at the at the front door? Or what? <laughs> <laughs> no. <laughs> Well, I'll tell you, the big thing that everybody was making a big complaint about is they go, well, here's the 1939 Nazi rally that took place at Madison Square Garden, and look how it compares to this one. They look alike. Yeah, but they weren't in the same Madison Square Garden. <laughs> <laughs> the other, This Madison Square Garden is a big, huge round building. The old Madison Square Garden was around inside, because that's the way it was set up, but mm. it was, uh, you know, it wasn't this one. So, anyway, it uh, it was it was hilarious. I mean, they had Lee Greenwood singing that horrible song, and they had uh, who? Oh, yeah, they had Hulk Hogan. Oh, wow! You know, <laughs> celebrity showed up. Yeah. Come on, they had Melania there too. Uh huh. Yeah. They had Melania there. Did too. you see the kiss? Did you see the kiss? Or what purported to be a kiss. <laughs> um, I wish I could show it to you. Uh, but they, she introduces him. Cause she, do you know she gets paid for that? Oh, yeah. I'm sure she they does. They pay her to show does. up and appear. Several hundred thousand dollars. Was that how much? She, she, yeah. gave a, she gave a five-minute talk to some uh, gay Republican organization, $275,000 for five minutes. Yeah. Jesus. Wow. But well, it's not a grift. No, no. She, she gets paid for showing up to these things. So now she introduces uh, uh, um, Donald, and he comes up. And, of course, what are you going to do? It's your wife, right? You should kiss her, right? Yeah. It's one of those, how do we How do we call this? It's the kind of, it's the kind of kiss I give one of Marjorie's friends when she comes by, or Paul, if she comes by. You know, <laughs> A little kiss on this cheek and a little kiss on this cheek. But it's, it's you know, I'm not sticking my tongue down her throat, you know. <laughs> huh? Much to, much to Paula's. But, but you know what I'm saying, Paula? You know what I'm talking about. The, the, the I do. I do, Alex. But frankly, the whole subject, I don't find any humor in it. And, uh, you know, like, uh, it, it's it, it just turns me off so I, it, it, so bad that uh, about what's happening uh, that that um, I'm finding ways of trying to ignore. You know what you have? You news. have the. Did you see that thing with um, uh, what's her name? Uh, Bill Clinton's old girlfriend from the Oval Office, uh, Lewinsky. Lewinsky. Monica Lewinsky. Did the article she wrote about how to get through all of this? Yeah, that was a good article. Yeah, yeah. She it's just people have an angst this year that they don't haven't had before. You look like you really have it, Paula. I do. You're really worried about this, aren't you? For good reason. I uh, I am. Uh, well, dear, uh, look, we'll just pick up and come visit us in uh, Europe when we stay there and don't come back. <laughs> Uh huh. Okay. Well, that's a solution. You know, we'll get I'm not crazy little, about the solution. <laughs> get ourselves a little house in uh, in uh, uh, France, or in Italy, Italy. or in Spain, Italy. or huh? Italy. 
Yeah. Uh, uh, it would be Portugal. Nice. Portugal. Portugal's yeah. nice. Uh, and then you can come stay. We'll make sure we have a guest room. Okay. Okay. And you can stay forever. I'm, I'm, all, I'm all better now. You can stay <laughs> forever if you want to. You know? <laughs> because, I mean, I, you know, what I look, quite frankly, I don't think uh, he's going to um, win. Okay. Uh, I think the pollsters are a little bit off and uh, not hitting it right. I think it may be close, but not that close. And uh, I'm yeah, you keep your fingers crossed. Yeah. yeah. I wish it were a landslide so there's no confusion. It's a possibility. You yeah. think it's a possibility? It, it really is. Why? Yeah. Because there's... All of this research at the, the last minute decision makers are leaning 70% for her. Many, many focus groups of, of women who are married to Trump men are saying in the voting booth, I can do what I want. Mm -hmm. There's there's a huge number of young people who who've registered who are vowing with energy to go to the polls. There's also uh, a bunch of people who typically are registered voters who don't vote that are energized. So it's a very good pie. I'm not saying that I it is, so. but there's there's a whole bunch of these small groups that together could make it into a landslide if they were to oh, show up, which so. means I, even turning, I, possibly even turning states that will surprise you. Oh, I hope so. Yeah. Uh, I, I, from, it, from your mouth to God's ear, as they say. Yeah. yeah. As a proud atheist, I'm offended by that. <laughs> and if he does, how dare win, you, Paula? If, if he does win, if he does win. So what? It's only four years. How much damage could he do? Oh, oh, uh, stop. Oh, stop. Oh, stop. <laughs> I, I love this argument. Well, he didn't do it in his last term, so what would make you think he'd do it? Oh, you know, because he I says know. he's going to do it. <laughs> I saw Van uh, Van Jones. His name? Yeah, yeah. I had him on my show. Good guy. Good intelligent guy. And he was on the uh, Bill Maher. And uh, he said, you know, there are people out there who go, well, he was president for four years and he didn't do anything that terrible. And he said, but then he didn't have the guardrails. You know, he had all these people in there who were from the military and so on, who then went, well, as long as we stay here, maybe we can keep him from doing that. Yes. Okay. What did, he uh, said, but those people aren't going to be around this time. Well, what and did Van Helsing and Van Halen say? Hmm? What did Van Helsing and Van Halen say, though? What did Van Helsing and Van Halen? <laughs> well, you're talking about Van Jones. I thought maybe you talked to his oh, cousin. Oh, I see. Okay. All right. Okay. Well, yeah. If you got to explain them, they're not worth telling. I guess. <laughs> well, you know, he's one of the, funny, <laughs> the funniest person here. <laughs> That includes my wife, who makes me laugh a lot. Mm. <laughs> but anyway, that's not what, what? That's not what she's laughing at. Yeah. Well, <laughs> you don't normally talk about politics, but there's a real angst going on here. How are you feeling about it, Mandy? Well, not good. <laughs> not good? Um, I mean, not enough. Well, everybody's, everybody, you know, it's, it's, you think about it and it is close. OK, at least according to the polls. But I was thinking about this the other day. There are people on the other side and it's close for them, too. You know, so everybody in the country is on edge with this thing. Yeah. And quite frankly, if the, if the final vote comes out and the, all the tolls or totals are finished and they're way out of kilter from what the polls said, I think we should go find these pollsters and lynch them, okay? <laughs> <laughs> well, we could agree on like that. that, yeah. yeah. In, in, in all seriousness, Alex, what's going on is there's all of these aggregator polls. So the, the Republicans have got 30 or 40 bullshit polls that, that show in the opposite because they know that they want to show that that there's no way that she won right. so that they can fight it. Yeah. So. Yeah. So the, the argument, you know, one one thing is absolutely going to happen after the election is he's going to say it was rigged whether he won or not. Oh, right. So I to think just be prepared for that. That's when things are going to get bizarre. Okay. But, but, wait a minute. Hold on a second. I got to do something here. He... Wait a minute. Oh, no, that that wasn't what I wanted to do either. Oh, well. OK, mm -hmm. keep going. Keep talking. 
I had a, something opened up that was uh, making noise. <laughs> uh, let me see here. Let me do this. Let me do this. Do this. Okay. Um, hmm. Sorry about Cheers. your cowboys there, Charlie. <laughs> yeah, well, they did it to themselves. Yeah. But how do you like Penn State? Number three in the country. Whoa. Yeah. <laughs> Go for it. I am. Who have they played? Anybody? They're Good? playing Ohio this Saturday. Good night. <laughs> about that game where the Hail Mary actually worked. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh, I saw that yesterday. I don't normally watch football, but I was waiting for 60 minutes to come on. Yeah. And I saw that last minute. It was uh, who and who. Were you polishing your Emmy? <laughs> While I was polishing my Emmy, exactly. But no, it really was. I am. Yeah. All of a sudden, I'm going. I'm going. Well, the 60 minutes will be on any minute now because uh, the this is the way the score is, right? And then all of a sudden, this guy does whatever he did, <laughs> threw it, and he grabbed it, and that was it. You know. Um. Bounced off of three uh, Bears players before he caught it. So. Oh, really? Yeah. And it was what, like 30 seconds left? No, it was less zero. than that. It was two seconds left when the play started. Play oh, time was out. <laughs> and we passed it. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. So, you know, it's, uh, it's, uh, this is all amazing. I mean, that never works. That's why they call it a Hail Mary because it never works. <laughs> <laughs> well it, it it worked and yep. uh, uh, I, I saw it i watched it it was cool very cool <laughs> oh, yeah they, they i guess uh, uh i didn't know what was happening exactly all i know is that something was happening that was good because marju went fuck did you see that <laughs> 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 I mean, if I watch sports, we'd be watching sports all the time in the house, wouldn't we, Marjorie? Nothing you'd be wrong with that. Football and be Nothing watching basketball. Nothing wrong with that. You know. Uh, Vernon, what's your favorite sport? <laughs> My favorite what? Sport. <laughs> um, probably college basketball. Okay. Yeah, the Kentucky Wildcats, huh? <laughs> no, University of Louisville Cardinals. Ooh. Ah. Yeah, we got a new coach. We stole him from the University of Charleston. Mm -hmm. And so this will be his first year. He seems like a very energetic guy, and he's attracting a lot of new talent. So, uh, and, what, and uh, 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 let's see here. Oh, I know. I, I'll ask somebody who doesn't talk much. John Hewing. What's your what's your favorite sport to watch? I would say football number one, but we're kind of gifted in the Bay Area because we have a lot of successful uh, franchises, in my opinion. <clears throat> uh, they pay well, and there's good character in the coaches. So uh, right now, the 49ers are scaring us a little bit, but uh, I think they're going to come back soon. So that's my Bay Area sports report for Alex. Yeah, okay. How about, you, how about you, Francine? Do you watch anything? Yeah, well, because my husband watches sports all the time. So um, I like I like uh, basketball. I kind of got into when the Knicks were in the playoffs. Mm -hmm. And it was it was pretty exciting. And it's easy to follow. Basketball is, I think, for me, the easiest game, uh, sport to follow. To me, it's, it, to me, it's baseball. Yeah, baseball's okay. To me, there's baseball's nothing much to understand about baseball. Right. Very simple. I could you just you could describe it, I guess, in uh, right. in thirty yeah. seconds. You know, whereas football. Yesterday, Marjorie's going to me. I go, well, what's a down? Yeah. <laughs> and she's then she describes it, and it's <laughs> like I have this inability to grab it. You know, and she and and most people when they when they tell me what a down is. They start five steps ahead of the question, you know. Uh, yeah, it's been so many yards. Well, and then, but in order to get that, you have to do this, and you have to do that, and you have to do this, and you have to do that. And I'm going, what? You know. I love it that I love it that your wife explains uh, sports to you. I think that's wonderful. <laughs> <laughs> Alex, Alex, an easy way to think of a down is 
Every time the play is over, they give it to the referee and he puts the ball down. down. Yeah. yeah. That's yeah. what it is. That's what it means. Yeah, he puts exactly. it down yeah. where it ends. And then they and they get four downs. And if they don't get a if they don't get 10 yards or more, then it goes over to the other team, either by punt it's or a try. Or, well done. Yeah. Four downs. That kind of has Scott. explained a lot to me. Okay. They, they get Scott. four. Fortunate. Of course, at my age here, we'll promptly forget the ends. <laughs> I'll explain it again next week. Okay. <laughs> but that's a very good thing. You have to put the thing down four times. Yeah. If you don't make 10 yards, then you have, but if you make 10 yards, you have another four downs, yeah. right? Right. Yes. Yeah. If you make another 10 yards, you have another four downs. Until you get to the touchdown where you touch, right. supposed to touch it down in the end zone, but they yeah. don't. Okay. Touch it and, and they oh. pull the, uh, the whole uh, 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 field is well, how many yards? Uh, 100, 100 yards. Yeah. Okay. So you have to you have to do this at least ten times, maybe or more, <laughs> or less. You know, you just go. Yes, yes, yes. But you can throw a bomb and get fifty or sixty yards on one play in one oh. down. Yeah. Okay, so then that's then mm. you're back to your first down again, yeah. right? Well, that's the best explanation I've ever Pretty good. Done. Thank, Thank you. you guys. I yeah. used to ask major football players, Ron, uh, Ronnie Lott, for instance. Asked him, explain. I said, explain football to me. I can't, I don't understand the game. And he tried to explain it to me, and I couldn't understand it. But but it's when the referee has the ball, it's over, when the play's over, they give it to him, he puts it down. Okay, suppose he doesn't <laughs> want to do anything with the ball and just leaves the stadium with it. Then <laughs> <laughs> he's fired and he's going to get a new ref. <laughs> I don't know how to answer that. It's That's why they have more than one referee. Huh? They have That's a backup more referee than one ref. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, they have seven refs on the field. Yeah. I thought it's what you stuff your pillow with. <laughs> Down. Yeah. Yeah. Um, um, let me see here. So, uh, yeah, I, the first time I heard it, I said I thought Down was on a duck. You know, <laughs> it is. Is. I mean, technically it is. Anyway, so uh, let me see here. You know, you know who we don't talk to at all? He's smiling. He knows that. <laughs> Edward Berger. That's right. <laughs> and to watch, I like bowling. Oh. You like bowl, bowling? Yeah. I, yeah. I used to bowl. Oh, that's good. That's good. I took, I took bowling in college. Uh, you had to take an athletic. So did I. You know, to get through co the college thing or whatever. This was the San Francisco City College. And I took bowling. And all you had to do was go and bowl over a period of the semester. Like, uh, can't remember now, maybe 10 lines of bowling or whatever. So I just go, I just went to the bowling alley and did them all in one day. <laughs> <laughs> Hey, uh, Ed, when when does your prices right air? Uh, well, the ones you can see me good will be uh, the day after Christmas and the day after that. So, All right. okay. oh, good, okay. Mm -hmm. where, where were you sitting in the audience? What area? Oh, I I, I don't know, but the, there's a, there's something on the internet that you from a, a couple of years ago that you can see me in. If you look up the the prices right from. Uh, December 16th, 2000, and I think 2007 or 2008, you can see me in that. Okay. Wow. Yeah. 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 <laughs> well, I, we do have other things to do. Yeah, I know. I'm just yeah. uh, playing it. Up. Okay. Uh, but, no, but we'll look forward to that. Because <laughs> okay. My, my question <laughs> is, though, why do you keep going out? Do you, do you hope maybe they'll ask you up on Oh, yeah. always. I always yeah. have that hope. And you've been there how many times? Oh, about 150, 160. Yeah. So, been going since 82, wow. except for a couple of years where I had to take off. I explained. And not once have they had you come up on stage. Not, that's right. Now, is it my imagination that the audience is smaller now than it used to be? Oh, yeah, when the Cavalry took over, they cut it down. Yeah. They yeah. cut it down. And also then when they had COVID, they cut it down more. Yeah, yeah, everybody right. Everybody in separate areas. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. I think, I think we question. should have a petition. 
Do you get, uh, you get the yeah. idea, ladies and gentlemen, that I watch The Price is Right? <laughs> Actually, I do Never. every day if I notice that it's like 15 minutes before the hour, I go over there to watch the showcase. Yeah. The spinning yeah, of the I, wheel and then the showcase. What I want to know, Alex, is when Ed's, Edward's going to be on The Golden Bachelor. <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, yeah, that's a good question. Be, be a better question for me, wouldn't it? No, you're yeah. married. By the way, I'm letting my beard grow out more here. Ooh. I'm getting starting to look like, you know, um, Thing along with Mitch. You guys got a big trip coming up there in a couple of weeks, huh? Hmm? Big trip coming up. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, we will do a show next week here. I don't know if I'm going to be able to do it the week afterwards because we're going to be there. You got still huh. here. And I can't get my iPad to do um, Facebook. Mm. I can get it to do, I, uh, you know, and then it will be 10 o'clock at night over there. Well, I think you should let us do the show here and you watch it from over there. <laughs> <laughs> we could do that. <laughs> yeah. 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 Um, mm -hmm. Trying to think how that works where everybody knows where it is. Hmm. Yeah. Well, you have to send out works. a note on your Facebook page. Well, you'd have to give somebody authority to log in and do whatever I think. Yeah. 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 Hmm, well, it's something to think about. I'll think. Uh, I'll figure it out in the next week. Or I better figure it out in the next week. <laughs> Pretty quick. Yeah, I we're only going there on for Facebook. five days, and I began to think if I thought better uh, of it, I probably would have had us go for a couple of weeks and go mm. some other places too. You know, mm. too late she, the whole reason it's only a couple of days is uh, I said, "What my do you birthday, want for your birthday?" She birthday. said, "To spend my birthday in Paris." So I yeah, said, well, "Okay, I we just got the fuck you money." Make the you get the go get the trip, you know. So she called up the travel agent, and you know that's why it's a short trip because it was meant to just be a present, you know. Mm. Um, but then we're planning, we're working on an Alaskan cruise, and we're working on a cruise up the Danube. Oh, oh nice! Well, it's gonna be fun. Yeah. Um, I'm you know all of which anything where I can just sit on the boat. That's all I care. About. Yeah, and they have good food. That's a priority. Right. Yeah, most of those of those cruises have good food, don't they? Some yeah. better than yeah. others. You know, the, those riverboat cruises supposedly have great food. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, but I mean, they, they, I don't. I. I. They gotta have decent food on those things. The big, the big cruises have gone down and over the years, but that's still good. We want the little cruises, not the big ones. Yeah, if you stay on a littler ship, you're going to be fine. Well, I want to go on the one with a water slide. Oh, that's <laughs> so oh, Alex. Talk, about, talk about redundancy. Yeah. Huh? I go on those things to get away from the damn kids, not to be with them. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah, but uh, you go on with no kids? There's none with no kids, but yes, there are. There's kids. plenty. Yeah. There's a there's a few. Well, the, no, the small the, the river. Few. There's a lot. There's a there's lot. River boats, I know, don't have any kids. Yeah. Um but, but any of the main and it's not that we main, don't like kids, it's just we don't like kids. We don't like kids. We don't like kids. Yeah. I don't remember seeing any kids on any of the cruises. I know they were there, but I never ran into them. I don't oh, want to huh. tell you that. Marjorie says I don't want to on the boat. Marjorie says, I don't want to go on one of these cruises with 5,000 people. And yeah. everybody I've ever talked to who's been on those cruises said it doesn't feel like it. No. You know? This ship is huge. Yeah. But, I mean, why do you want something that huge? I mean, if I'm traveling on a boat, I like hmm. to know I'm traveling on a boat, not that they took a hotel to and just, just like managed to, to put it on a ship. What? Just like there's more to do in New York than in Poughkeepsie. Yeah, yeah, there's more to do true. on a huge cruise boat than it is on a little tiny boat. Oh, yeah, see some of those lousy, you know, uh, uh, redos of Broadway shows that they try to. <laughs> That's <laughs> really good. good for me. I love them. Hmm. Yeah, the shows are good, you know. Yeah, I want to see somebody on a ship doing Oklahoma. <laughs> Uh, yeah, the ice skating shows were just fantastic. Well, do they have ice skating? Also, yeah, Royal yeah. Caribbean does. Yeah, yeah. That thing must have, be 
those things must be huge if they can do that. 250,000 250, tons. <laughs> uh, not for me. Well, There's Marjorie refuses to buffet. take one of those. She yeah. absolutely refuses to take them. So don't even start at, at telling her, you know. The only cruise we're going to take of any amount of people on it is the Alaskan. Yeah. And uh, which I'm told is cool. superb. It's fantastic. Mm -hmm. How many days on the uh, Alaskan cruise? We're, just, we're looking into it now. We're looking yeah. for a one-day cruise. And, uh, <laughs> you no. can get a two-week Alaskan cruise. Gilligan's Island. My suggestion yeah. is uh, a 10-day cruise out of Vancouver. That yeah. My best. I love it. 10-day cruise out of Vancouver. <laughs> Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Up, uh, up into, up into Alaska, and so on. Yes. Right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. We, we, we gone twice, and I like the one out of Vancouver the best. Yeah, it's that good. Yes. Wow. Who left us? Who do we lose? Well, oh, we lost. No, we didn't lose Mandy. <laughs> didn't lose Francine. Oh, Francine. No, I'm here. I'm here. oh she's there. I'm here. Who Vernon. is me? Vernon. No, oh yeah, no, Vernon. Yeah. Vernon. Oh, Vernon's there. Vernon's yeah. there. Vernon, Vernon. Everybody gets rearranged when that mm. happens. Yeah. Yeah. But who? Yeah. who, who Jeff? Uh, yeah, so Jeff. we're going to go on. Oh, our... no, Jeff is here. He's oh, here. Okay. Was to the left of... Let Jeff talk. Andrew. Where's Andrew Jeff? Left. I don't see him. There Andrew's he is. Not here. He left. <laughs> <laughs> I'm on my little tiny iPhone, so I don't. I don't know. Know. Is this is <laughs> all. Wait a minute. I'm trying to think who could possibly <laughs> uh, I'm here. Scott's still here. Yeah. And Andrew? Huh? Oh, Andrew's there. Andrew is here. <laughs> I bet I'm on my tiny phone. Oh, oh, it's Lynn LaFrisco. Where did Lynn yeah. go? Oh, Lynn's, Lynn's gone. gone. Yes, Lynn left. taking a cruise. Come on. <laughs> <laughs> cruise. I'm fixing a cruise. Mm. Well, I'm gonna I'm gonna try and see if we can do something from there. If I can't, I I can take video and then, you know, Marjorie and I and do those little things we do on Facebook and put them up there. Mm. You know, so that's that's the one thing we can do. So what did you want to do? What? What did you want to do in in Paris for four days? Sleep probably for the first <laughs> two. You know, um, what 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 are we gonna do for two days uh, in Paris? Well, we're basically just we're gonna play tourist. Yeah, no, and I, I want to go over to my favorite museum is the Musée d'Orsay, okay. which is yes, you know, where all the Van Goghs and Manets yeah. and Monets and Mayonnaise are. <laughs> and <laughs> um, you know, I I want to see see the Eiffel Tower from somewhere which probably will happen because we're going to be right near the Place de la Concorde and you can see it from there. People say uh, that's a then great... Marjorie tour wants to go down to Versailles. Go up. What? Uh, it's really good to go on the... Go high up up the uh, bridge there. Eiffel Tower, yeah. Yeah, but the tower. that these days is it's such a tourist attraction well, that you almost have to make a reservation to yeah. get on the elevator or to get on any of those tours right. on the Eiffel Tower. And it's fine. I've been up there before. I, I just like the look of it. You know, I like mm. to look at it from far away. Marjorie wants to go to Versailles. Um, Sacre Coeur, I want to take her up to, which is up on the hill overlooking all of Paris. It's a beautiful view. And, uh, and it's right near Montmartre, which is right down the street. Which I guess if I can walk, we could walk down the steps and go to Montmartre. So you know, there are things to do. The Notre Dame Cathedral is not open yet, I think, right? No, no. Oh, but supposedly, there's a virtual Notre Dame Cathedral, which is supposed to be spectacular. What? Yeah, yeah. yeah. It's, it's like open online, huh? I think what's, it's what's, open. A vir what's a virtual? You mean online? It, it, yeah, you go in it, and it's kind of like being there, and so on. This is what like I've been the glasses called. and stuff, where you actually three D and all that stuff wandering around. Yeah, and it's it's going to open up when I think it's supposed to open up early next year again. Yeah, I think so. February, I think maybe. Yeah, yeah. I'll tell you the I, I, as a Jew, the most spectacular moment I ever had in Paris was I was walking around, and I didn't know what I was doing, and. 
I was looking at stuff, and I'm on the sin, and it looks great. And I look over, and there's this big imposing church. And I went, gee, that's Notre Dame. <laughs> so it's a Sunday, and I figure I will go in and just see what's happening. I walked in, and the organ was playing, and the music, and it was just so heavenly in there that I almost said, screw being a Jew, okay? <laughs> They really knew what they were doing, those guys, didn't they? Well, no, what they did, they put on a great show. That's really but what Catholicism was all about. And they would put up these big, beautiful edifices out in the middle of some town. And people knew they were very poor and they didn't really have much, but they knew this church is the one place that would welcome them. And they could go in and feel like they were a king in this atmosphere. That's pretty terrific, you know, pretty terrific. So, uh, you know, um, uh, so I love the churches. And there's also, you know, we should take you to Marjorie. There's a Picasso museum. I don't know if you know about it, but Picasso, it's not so much Picasso's work, but Picasso was a great collector of other people's work. And there's a whole museum of nothing but the stuff that belonged to Picasso when he died, mm. the artworks. Uh, have you ever been to the Picasso Museum? The, um, your mic, your microphone isn't on. Turn it on. I went to the Picasso Museum and the Matisse Museum at the south of France. Oh, really? Yeah. There are several Picasso. places, but you know what's strange? There's several of those. In fact. There are several. Do you, uh, I, uh, I was told Van Gogh painted two of everything. <laughs> one for now and one for later. You know, I mean, <laughs> he, he he painted everything twice. So that there's a, there are museums in Amsterdam, for instance, that have some of the works that you see in the Musée d'Orsay, but they're the other version of that work. So mm. anyway, so much for what I know about art. <laughs> Uh, that's, well, that's why it's really fun to go to a museum with Marjorie. Yeah. Uh, um, here, here we go. Len LaFrisco is coming back. I don't know what happened to him, but here he comes. Here he comes. Anyway, uh, is, anybody here been to Paris uh, to any large extent? Yeah. yeah. Uh, any suggestions for us about places we should go that we... I mean, I've been there how many times? Maybe five, six times. But what, any suggestions? I think there's a Walmart. <laughs> <laughs> Target. Oh, I, I know one thing. I was in the Walmart Apparently, in Beijing. I'm recommending one thing. Well, yeah. There's a restaurant, which I think... Is like a hundred and six hundred years old, and in this restaurant still exists, and you, it's a great place to go and have coffee and whatever, because there's like a number of presidents or guys who are very important used to sh hang up there, and I think they get stamps of them. Uh, Showing, uh, think about who's the guy who uh, would uh, present, and he would represent uh, Paris. An important. Uh, well, you, American can, you, guys. you can get yeah, you can get a coffee, donut, and the Black Plague. Yeah. <laughs> In that order. Yeah. <laughs> so, I'll take a Black Plague to go. <laughs> Anyway, I'll so uh, that, the coffee. that's what we're going to do. Len, why aren't you showing us your face? What is this? Uh, oh, really? Uh, I'm on, uh, my power went out. I'm on my phone now. So what's going on? Oh, uh, let's you see. Do. I don't. Yeah. Well, anyway, uh, Mandy. Yes. Uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Yes, ma'am. Yes. Uh, I don't know. We were talking about sports. A sport you love, did you say? Oh, yeah. I, I was saying earlier that I was I missed the whole conversation about football because I was talking to somebody and I had to work. 
but uh yeah i mean that's you know the that's probably my favorite sport to watch is football mm. really yeah, yeah. Okay. georgia bulldogs yeah <laughs> yeah it, you know what it did it supplanted baseball as the favorite sport in america Mm -hmm. I mean, Probably. baseball, mm -hmm. when I was growing up as a kid, baseball was everything, right? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Nobody cared. Football was a ditzy little sport that they played in colleges. Mm -hmm. You know, the pro football, nobody even paid attention to. And at some point, and I, and I, the reason I think it became the predominant sport is because television came mm -hmm. in. Yeah. Yeah. I, I would baseball, say Joe Namath. I would say Joe Namath. Yeah, Joe Namath. Oh. Yeah, yeah. 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 You know what I'm saying? And, and is, the Super Bowl. And the Super Bowl. Yeah. You might disagree with me, but then again, I have a sports Emmy, so you can't. Uh, <laughs> radio was a was a was a was a baseball sport. Yeah, you could sit there and listen to it. Yeah. You could sit there, you had a good play-by-play -play guy, and you could close your eyes and you can envision what was going on on the on the on the field. Uh, baseball. Well, I will argue that Georgia University of Georgia had somebody named Larry Munson who passed away many years ago, but he was very well known. He was on the radio, very beloved, and he was just so colorful and awesome um, when he I mean, I think you can listen to football on the radio. I mean, I've listened to the Falcons oh, yeah. many times in the, on the radio. Yeah, but but baseball was easy to make really exciting. It's more exciting on radio than it ever was. If You're you right. I have to agree. And mm -hmm. I, I think it's better to watch baseball on television to get a thing to go to the game. Well, once <laughs> television came in, baseball was too slow a sport. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. You know, I mean, uh, and and uh, I, I work for a guy named Gordon McClendon. And Gordon McClendon had a thing called the Liberty Broadcasting Network. And what Gordon McClendon did was he did recreations of baseball games. In other words, he would have somebody in, say, Philadelphia uh, in a hotel that overlooked the ballpark, and he could see the whole ballpark. And then he would just keep sending him the just short pieces of information, you know, like so-and-so's up to the bat. He takes a swing, he misses, takes another swing, he misses, then he hits mm -hmm. it and goes into left field, you know, this kind of information from somebody far away looking through binoculars. And then he would back in, uh, in, in uh, it was in Dallas, Texas, at KLIF, his radio station. He would sit there and he would have a sound effects guy and himself. And then he would just do the play-by-play -play as it was happening, but he would embellish it, make it exciting. And people felt that his recreations of baseball games were actually better than the baseball game itself because mm -hmm. he just made it sound so exciting. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And so you could do that with radio. You could do recreations of baseball games and and do very well with it. And he uh, he built a whole career out of that. I, I personally love Ken Burns' uh, thing on baseball mm -hmm. uh, uh, um, as a, as a you know, the, the American sport. And he, I mean, he does it, all his stuff is, is wonderful, but I, um, I think the baseball one is especially, especially yeah. good. I always felt I was never a big sports guy, right? But I love baseball more than any of them because I love the history of baseball. Yeah. Yeah. I love the lore about baseball. Mm -hmm. There's so many, you know, interesting stories about baseball. Yeah. And I just don't find football that interesting. You know, I don't find it that mythic. Uh, you know, and football's I don't. It's just more like, it's almost like entertainment now, especially like in the yeah. press. You know, it's it's like showmanship and athleticism too, but a lot more kind of like. Yeah, but if I want that, I'll watch wrestling. Oh, <laughs> I'm going to watch the Yankees tonight. Really? Yeah, oh, yeah. I thought you were going to say you're going to watch wrestling. <laughs> <laughs> no, that's on Wednesday nights, AEW. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's uh, you know Hulk Hogan last night. Oh, there was uh, there was the time when I followed uh, I followed wrestling a lot because I just thought it was hilarious. 
Did you watch that documentary about Vince McMahon? Yeah, I watched all of it. Amazing. Oh my gosh, that was crazy. What a sleazeball he is, right? Tell me about it. <laughs> For real. Yeah. I mean, he but he he ruled with a heavy hand, you know. I mean, the old days you had wrestling had all these different you know conferences or whatever mm -hmm. bay area foot wrestling league and so on. yeah <laughs> every every one of these things had a guy who owned it yeah. and a lot of these guys ruled the sport and it wasn't until mcmahon came in and started buying them all up yeah that he then made it coalesce into one thing yeah which was the wwf later the wwe because the World Wildlife Federation yeah. said you can't use that. Right. Yeah. But then the AEW split off from that. I, it's because I have a very good friend that watches it. <laughs> oh, I see. I won't okay. mention who it is, but I've been mm -hmm. subjected to having to watch wrestling lately. But <laughs> it's really funny. I mean, but he, he says that. He's like, I won't, I won't watch anything that's Vince McMahon, you know, blah, blah, blah. He's very right. Right, right. Well, he did a documentary with me. Mac, Mac, man's completely out of the business. Now we go to Marjorie. I don't, I, I don't have to personally ask her this question. What is your favorite sport? Uh -huh. Tennis. Tennis. I like tennis and I like basketball. Yeah. <laughs> but basketball but what do you like best? Thing? You like tennis. Tennis is your big deal. And basketball. College. Do you like college basketball? Yeah. I do too. I like college basketball better than pros. Yeah, me too. <clears throat> okay, let me see here. Oh, there's uh, there he is. There is there is uh, Mike Chisholm. Hey, everybody. Okay. All right. How you doing, Mike? Oh, I'm doing okay. I uh, well, you know, my dad's starting to go through dementia, and I'm an advocate for him, and I go to every doctor doctor's appointment. We just went to a doctor's appointment, so you do know, they, do they I'm okay. They have any kind of medicines now for dementia to kind of make his dementia improve? Yeah. You know, I the think type he has is. Hmm? Go ahead. What? Oh, uh, they're they're, they're going to try one that will hopefully slow down. His is related to Parkinson's. It's called Lewy body dementia, and it has oh yeah, that's what that's visions. What, uh, that's what uh, Robin Williams had. Mm. Yeah. 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 It's pretty. It's it's it's. Uh, yeah, it's one of those things. It's kind of sad that it's happening, and so it's very sad. So they're hoping that one of these medications will slow things down a little bit, but basically they're not given it, much. It, it, my mm. question always is, is it sad? I know it's sad for you, you know, because yeah. it affects the family. But yeah. he himself, is he feeling the pain of having this, or is he just oblivious to it? So it's the left and the right. Like, like, like once you get all the way over to the right, you're fine but and he is progressing pretty quickly um but like six months ago he was like 90 percent on the left only 10 percent on the right well now it's about 70 30 and the moments of lucidity he knows that he can't trust himself anymore he knows that he can't and that makes it really really hard so yeah so, so if he was all the way over who who who, who was talking who asked a question? Somebody, somebody here asked a question. I thought I heard it. Oh, maybe not. I don't think so. Yeah, but uh, so uh, yeah, I. That, um, hey, you know, how old is he? Seventy three. Seventy three. He's almost. No, that's no. that's that's pretty I'm young. Sorry, Mike. Yeah. I mean, Marjorie yeah, didn't so. get her dementia till three days ago. <laughs> <laughs> Does she remember? What did I miss? <laughs> well, she has she has memory problems. She'll even admit to it. You know, I have memory problems. Yeah, I mean, I, but how bad <laughs> at your age? Well, I mean, you know, I mean, you you start to just forget things. You know, you forget. Oh, I was going to fill this cup up and then I just walk out without, you know, like I yeah. literally go, okay, don't forget this. And I still walk out without it. You know, that's kind of things. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I, that's, I don't know if that, that's not just normal. I mean, as you get older, you start doing that. Right. I think somebody once said that they think that a lot of times the problems with 
with uh, cognition is that the older you get, the more your brain fills up with stuff. And it has to start unloading some of it in order to remember the rest of it, you know, yeah. that you have only a limited amount of information you can store. I'm very sorry to hear about that, Mike. It can't be an easy. I appreciate it. Thanks. Uh, you know, uh, but, yeah, it's, it's weird. But that's what you get for having a father. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> My own oh, dad. <laughs> you had a father. Yeah. I can relate, Mike. My stepdad had dementia the mm -hmm. last couple of years he was alive, so it was rough. It yeah, was tough to see. My it was mother had, to see. Yeah. yeah, my mother had dementia, but she lived to be a hundred. Wow. Uh, and you know, I mean, I, I certainly realized it when I once told her, "Hey, mom, I'm going to New York City," and she said, "Well, say hello to my mother and father." Mm. Wow. So they'd have been dead for like fifty years. <laughs> But that's the kind of thing that happens, you know, with dementia. Uh, yeah. But she lived to be 100, you know. And uh, I don't think the last couple of years was that great. I had her in a Jewish home for the aged. And she'd ask me, where am I? And I'd say, you're in the Jewish home for the aged. And she said, why? And I said, because you're Jewish and you're Asian. That's why. <laughs> she didn't get the joke. You know? And I go, I go come to New York and I'd be in New York doing stuff and working and so on. And then I would head back home for a weekend or a week. And I go see my mother. And the first thing she was like, she thought I was there the day before. You know. <laughs> So when people said, well, aren't you going out and taking care of your mother and seeing your mother a lot and so on? I said, it wouldn't do anything. She wouldn't know anything better, you know. So it, it, it's it's all very sad. And, it, it you know, uh, I feel for you, Mike. But, you know, on the other hand, it sounds like you had a great father and he, he had a great life with him. And, you know, he's still not gone. And maybe you can make what years are left uh, interesting. But that being that young and getting it uh, is not is not good, you know. It's it's funny. So I always talk about Letterman podcast when I'm on here. But the reason I'm a podcaster was is actually because I started as a, as a my men's mental wellness podcast to support my wife's app that her and her team are building. And I've had my dad on three times, so mm -hmm. I have. And I mean, my dad has beaten anger, um, you know. In the so I've had him on twice. One time he talked about his. His, his fight with anger. The second time he came on, um, he had, a, he had a, a disability and he talked about the fight with that. And then the third time he came on was just about six months ago and we recorded it. And, and, and it was him knowing that he can't trust his mind and going through it. And at the end of the day, I know that there's something inside me that's like, okay, have these amazing conversations with your father shot in beautiful high definition that I can go back to. Wonderful. Wonderful years to come, and and I have those, and and, and I'm I'm very very grateful for it. I'm very 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 grateful for that. Yeah, um, because yeah, he's he's turning into a different person, and that's that's not the easiest thing in the world to deal well, with. Well, the, the important thing to do: turn your camera the other way, Francine. Okay. There we there go. We. Okay, um, uh, you know that I I started. Uh, you know, I really wish I had done more video and stuff with people that I knew. Over the years, the only thing was is that the ability, you know, this makes it all possible. Yeah. Know? I mean, this is high definition, 4K. Go out and, you know, shoot your parents and ask them questions. And, you know, really, I think that if I had my way, I would have spent more time with my mother if I had had something like this. <laughs> Having her tell me stories about, Growing up, you know, she grew up here in New York, and and, uh, and she was born in 1904, right? And yeah. you know, what was it like? I remember taking my mother. This is true. Took my mother back to the Bronx mm -hmm. when she a few years before she died. She said, "I want to go home and I want to see my na old neighborhood." I said, "Where?" She said, "The Bronx." She told me exactly where. I knew where I could find it. Asked people, found it. We're there, and she looks, and she goes, this isn't my old neighborhood. It never looked this terrible. <laughs> <laughs> you 
I said, Mom, how long ago did you live here? And she said, 80 years ago. I said, things change, you know, things change. Yep. Um, but, uh, you know, it wasn't <clears throat> until the last couple of years that my mother really kind of went mentally, you know. So I, I could say I was very lucky, but I wish uh, my father had lived to be that that age and he did you know he died at 59 mm. yeah wow but always you know if if you have parents ask them questions ask them all about their upbringing and just in minutia minutia not just you know where were you born where'd you grow up where, where'd you go to school yep. that's minor stuff what was it like you know being and growing up in that time and what, what did you do on an average day as a kid, you know? Because those were the yep. days when you went out and played with your friends and your mother mm. said, just be home for dinner and didn't worry about you. That's right. You know? They have books and stuff because um, my friend Henry, his daughter, Father's Day, gave him a journal. And it was like, Dad, tell me about yourself. or something. It's like it's got some kind of title like that. And yeah. it's just prompts where he could just write all these memories and stories down. Wow. For them to have, yeah. and as, even, as much as I talked to my mom about stuff, especially near the end, she started talking a lot about old memories, and mm. I still wish I had asked her more, you know. Yeah. And when I was talking to her cousin, to, when I had to call her to let her know that her cousin had passed, and she's four years older, she so sharp as a tack. She started just telling me so many stories of when they were kids and stuff. It was great. Oh. Yeah, well, right after this show, I plan to sit down with Marjorie and ask her about her life. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, hey, listen, this has been really nice, you know, and 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 it's a, a, a kind of a catharsis. We are going through such a just an anguishing time. And Paula brought it all out when she just said, I just can't take this any longer. You know? Is that what I said? <laughs> yeah, that's what I said. <laughs> what I felt. That's yeah. true. Yeah, I think we're all sick of it, you know, and we're sick of it because it didn't start yesterday. It started three years ago. Five and years I hope, ago. What, what were you going to say, Vernon? Five years ago. Five years yeah. ago. I mean, it just keeps going on and on and on, you know. And I'm, I'm, of course, I'm hoping that, that Kamala uh, wins. Um, it would be, I think, very good for the country. But if she doesn't, then the country is going to get what they deserve. You know, unfortunately, we're all on the same boat with them. You know, and we have to suffer it. Yeah. Uh, and I think the people who are going to suffer the most. And here, here we get political. Well, the show's over with anyway. It's past the hour. <laughs> uh, the, the terrible thing about it is that there are people who are going to really suffer. And those people are people like Marjorie and I, seniors in this country, who have enough trouble having some kind of say-so in what happens, are going to have nothing, you know? And, I mean, if they want to gut Social Security and they want to gut Medicare and do all of those things, mm -hmm. who's going to be hurt by it, you know? And Alex, I, I preferred it when you made a joke. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Me too. I mean, that's a real downer. Okay, well, then uh, let me make you happy, okay? <laughs> yeah. uh, I think, I think it, it is just because of the way it is. There is just as good a chance that she's going to win. This is true. Yeah. That there is that he's going to win. I mean, but the, the, so because you're on that side, don't think <laughs> negatively, put out a lot of good thoughts into the atmosphere. And I think uh, most people who kind of are good at analyzing this stuff seems to think she's going to win it. And it's going to be a surprise to everybody by how much, mm. you know, I mean, once people get into the in the voting booth, or once they're at home and they check that box and put it in an envelope, you know, uh, I think they're going to say, I've had enough of this. You know, I need something new. I need something untested, you know. Uh, so maybe she can surprise me. And, uh, we, you know, we don't get any surprises with Trump. 
Uh, I don't even know if he's going to live long enough to see out a term. Yes, Vernon. Well, Here's you. some good news. The Philadelphia DA is suing Elon Musk for his $1 million voter giveaway as an illegal lottery. Really? Yo, Philly! Good, yep. <laughs> good deal. Illegal good deal. Yeah, well, there goes my Tesla. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, Marjorie's going to make me ravioli for dinner. She sent out to Italy. Mm. Italy. Yeah. And you're all invited, by the way. <laughs> all right. I wonder who can even get here is Francine Witt. No, I'm in, I'm in Boston. Oh, you're in Boston. in Boston. Yeah, right. Anyway, thanks to Marjorie and thanks to Scott. Scott, always good seeing you, you know. Uh, you've been an old friend of the shows that I do, and I really have appreciated that. Uh, I, but I'm not going anywhere either, so don't worry. Uh, Charlie, thank you. I really appreciate okay. it. Charlene Solis, thank you. Just in case you want to know, huh? baseball is my favorite sport. <laughs> oh really? Well, then you must be uh, going crazy right now. What with uh, the World Series? The World Series. Yeah, yeah I'd be I'd be happier if the Giants were there, but they don't have. They didn't have. Well, I w I was hoping it was going to be the the Mets and the Yankees, and then it would be you know it kind of be fun in this town. Immortal. Yeah. Anyway, okay. thank you for being here, Jeff. Thank you. Thank you to Vernon Nunn. Always nice seeing you here. Uh, uh, also, uh, the wonderful and attractive uh, John Ewing. <laughs> Thank you for being here. He's uh, out there in California. Mandy is driving to do her whatever, you know, <laughs> uh, and she, she's got her classes that she does. Paul Levin, always wonderful to see you, sweetheart. And you know, wishes to you too, Mike. Come live with us in France or Italy or <laughs> wherever. Um, um, Mike Chisholm, you know, we can all, all go up and stay at Mike Chisholm's place if we can't yeah. stand it anymore. Yeah. We can all go up to Canada. It's hard to get in Canada. Ask me about that. Oh, by the way, the funniest <laughs> thing today, before we go, you know, this guy wrote this horrible song, Lee Greenwood. <laughs> yeah. That song, God Bless the USA. Oh, do you know that he has a version of a God Bless Canada? Yeah, what a yeah. whore that guy is. Wow. <laughs> so, hey, hey, growing up in elementary school, guess what? what? I had no idea the song This Land is Your Land had an American version of it. I only knew the Canadian version of This Land is Your Land growing up. I only knew the Canadian That's version. Great so song. same with that That's song. A, that should be our national anthem. Yeah, it really should be. Yeah. You know? This Land is Your Land? Well, yeah, yeah, and we should ours have could be identical thing. Like yeah. Every verse, the second verse is like really right, left wing. Anyway, yeah. thanks, Mike. Thanks to Len LaFrisco. Thanks to Francine Witt, who is in. Mm -hmm. What are you doing up there, by the way? In I'm visiting a friend. Oh, okay. All right. Yeah. Uh, we should have, we should have lunch sometime or dinner or something. You know, be really nice. Anyway, uh, and, and thanks to, of course, ladies and gentlemen, the man who signs us off. God, we're running over. The man who signs us off by saying, that's all, folks. Hey, goodbye, everybody. Have a nice week. Bye, See you next week. Bye. Bye, guys.